people, welcome back to another video. Uh, if you didn't notice, I just remembered to uh, go in landscape mode. So I just want to do another overview of this because I don't think I ever published a video and stuff has changed. So how does this entire setup work? What is everything and what is everything doing? So the most important piece is how does this panel get its AC power? Unlike a security system, which most of you guys are probably more familiar with, where you just have a transformer and you may cut the end off of to wire it or you actually are smart and have the right transformer. This gets straight 120 volts right here. But you guys know the system doesn't run off 120, it runs off of 24 volt. So there are two transformers in here and they're 12 volt each and I think they splice together as what I think it's doing. That's how it gets its AC now, or how the panel gets AC into it rather. But in my case, it's getting AC power from, there's an outlet right here. Um, there's a wire, you can follow that piece of Romex there, that yellow wire is going into that outlet, it's spliced in. It goes into this switch, through this switch, into the panel. And I'm gonna cycle this really quick because I don't wanna lose date and time. So hopefully I do it quick enough. But you will see when I flip this, the system goes into a trouble for AC fault. And now it's gonna report an AC fault. So I'm gonna get into how that works here in a second. I also just today removed the plastic cover on this. Uh, it may go back on, I'm debating it. It's so, if something happens and this is over there or something where my parents need to silence it, they can. Um, but it may go back on, I'm debating it. All right, so how does it get its dialer communication? I guess we'll go there next. So the 9200 has two dialer ports, a primary and a secondary. So they both have to be plugged in because um, you'll get a secondary fault. Maybe there's a way to fix it. Maybe not. I don't know. I haven't been able to figure that out. But they're both plugged in. Now, how this is running is a little weird because it would not be run this way in a building. You would have an RJ1131X jack or a couple other ways you could do it, but that's the most common. Mine is not in a building, so I'm special because <laughs> I don't have to follow code. So what this is doing, these dialer cables are just Ethernet cables as actually that's all they are. They're not normal phone cables. They're going up through that little hole. You can see this black thing is a ferrite coil. It's supposed to help with noise and inter interference with the electrical into the data. It goes over and it comes out right here. Now this knockout isn't knocked out. Technically it should be knocked out and I should have a, one of those guys on it, but whatever. I don't wanna knock it out completely because I don't need to. So it goes down and it comes out and goes into the back of this phone jack here. Now, why is it going in the back? Well, it's because if I ever want to take the dialer off, all I have to do is that. Now it can't dial. Because, and I'll explain this in a minute, this dialer this is the line one port, which is what my fire panel's on. This is a two port um, ATA here. When this dials out, it goes through those cables right here. Now there's only, on a phone cord, there's only two cable or two wires. See, there's only two little prongs there. Well, ethernet, as you guys know, most likely has six. So where in the world are the other like four going? Nowhere. Um, it's only terminated into two spots. The wires have been trimmed. And this one's like green and something. It's the, it's the middle ones. So yeah, green and red on that. And blue and striped blue, I think maybe on that one. They're getting terminated both into the same spot. Not because I have a failover, because I, I don't have a failover. But so this will shut up about a secondary fault 
So that's how that's working. It's literally just going out in the back of this. And so I can interface with it easy. Like if I want to move the ATA, it, it's literally just boom. It, it, it's unhooked. It's that easy. So that's why it's done that way. Now, Ethernet is a similar story. So we've got a Wi-Fi extender connected to a hotspot. Guys, before you say it, I know. I hate our internet situation. It's it's the only way I can do it. So upstairs, there's a hotspot from T-Mobile provided for my school. It's fast enough, apparently, because I haven't had very many calm like dropouts. I've had faults from it like going offline or whatever, but I haven't had any dropouts. Um, so that's good. So there's this green jack, but you might notice, hey, this is all yellow here. This is because this is the same sort of thing. That green wire, you can see it goes from there over, goes into the bottom of the back box right there. And this is a keystone jack. So if I was to take this off, you would notice that behind here, that green cable is just directly plugged in like this. Now, why did I do it this way? Again, simplicity. If I want to move this ATA and I still want Ethernet here, all I have to do is that. And now the ATA is unhooked. It makes it really easy. And I still have Ethernet. You know, I, I didn't have to move anything. Let's plug that back in before stuff starts screaming. And I do have a patch cable upstairs that I made specifically for this. When I was in school and did my networking, Google IT networking, I had to make a cable, and I made one for this. So, yeah. So it'll get plugged in. It's it's blue, um, and I'll use that one instead. But that's how the dialing situation works. So basically, everything here you see, all of that is for dialing. This is for dialer. That's for dialing. That's for that basically is the dialer, and that's the dialer. Now, how does this interface, and what does it dial to? Well, there's a company called Protostar um, Alarm Monitoring, and they have central station tools and stuff at their place, I guess, wherever. And they have this phone system open, and that's what I'm using. So it will report to my Discord in a specific Discord channel. And don't worry, I'm going to do a full overview where you guys see that eventually. Um, it also will send me an email, but I've hit my email limit because I set it up wrong. So it just emailed me about literally everything. So you get 365 or something like that, or 56 a month. And I've hit that. So that's how that works. Now, if you know, remember, this is an addressable system, not a conventional panel. Uh, conventional panels, you have zones. So you would only have... Um, two wires going into every device unless it's a four wire detector but the principle is the exact same aside it just gets power separate so addressable is different um addressable you have a minimum of four wires so this is our slc loop my color coding is red and white is positive green or excuse me, I guess I should say black and green is negative. They get tied together, and the, the wiring I'm using, I forget which one it is, but they're getting tied together. So, um, hmm. So, I'm going to do this for you guys to show you better. Unlike a conventional setup, hold on, that noise incoming. Unlike a conventional panel where you would have zone, 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 you have loop. Notice there's uh, technically three devices, but two using, I'm using only two right now, hooked up, but there's only four wires. So a SOC stands for signaling line circuit. So everything is on one continuous loop. If we look here, you might be like, geez, that's a lot of extra wire. That's exactly correct. Eventually, I'm going to use this 4x4. I could do that now, actually. 
and it's going to be the junction box for everything. So our pull station here has a module because it's a not an addressable by default. So, I mean, technically it would have a module if it wasn't addressable because that's how it works. So you can see there's a red and black and a purple and yellow. So the purple and yellow are to the switch. You can see our end of line resistors there. And our red and black are going into these Wego connectors. So if you look, you can see the same orange wire here. One of them is the, it's this one. There's our, what didn't you know? There's our red and our white, which is our positive, and our green and black, which is our ground or negative. That's to the pull station, right? Well, it's not, because if you look, there's an outgoing. It's the next device. This is the first device. The next device on the circuit would be um, this one. This one is going into the modern module, and I'll explain how that works here in just a second. Then there's a third one which isn't being used because it's being really weird and making me mad, so I gave up on it. There's another mini mod, um, and I'll show how that's wired because it, it'll make it it'll look simpler. So it's just a big loop. There's no zones. Your zones are you setting the correct address. Now what this means is because there's no zones, so how you would normally have stuff set up is like the entire foyer. All the pull stations, would, or most of them, would be on one zone loop. Well, that's great. Aside from the fact it says, for your pull station. Which one? There's like 20. That's the question that should never be asked, is which one? Hold on. That's the question that should never be asked, is which one? Addressable? Every device can be named its own thing. Also with addressable, every device is monitored. So if you have a loop problem, or if it was a, uh, conventional, a zone problem, rather than it saying for your fault, I just changed the address. We'll get an involved reply fault here in a minute. It would say the exact device that's having the problem. So, if we wait, just a second anyway, it, it takes a minute. It's not a immediate response. Um, well, it'll come up in a minute, I'll start beeping. There it is. So, this isn't named anything yet, it's just a spool station, but if it was named, it would come up and tell me the exact name. So let's go ahead and put that back to Address 20, and close it. It should self-clear itself. Um, now, this monitor module, which I was just talking about earlier, it is... There it goes, it just cleared. So, the monitor module is... This is a dual monitor module in particular. There's only one thing on it, but I bought a dual. So it's monitoring the weather radio. And these are basically just big versions of these that mount on boxes. That, that's literally all it is. Um, it's also got the same wheels for addressing. And I just wanted to open that up so you can see that's the end of the circuit. So you can see our then are positive and negative there. If I was to unhook this, it would uh, go into trouble for this device because it knows that this device isn't receiving power. And it would also probably go into an open trouble maybe because of the resistors, but I don't think it would because it wouldn't know because it doesn't have power. So that's how that works. Now, the advantage to this setup is you don't run out of zones and each device or zone can be a separate thing. So if we look, if I go to alert test, we go into an active hazard alert. There's the name for this zone only, which is weather emergency. Now, because fire has priority over everything, and you can see that's stuck on, what that means is that that device has tripped. Um, 
So fire has priority over everything. Uh, security systems are usually the same way. Um, so what that means is, because this is on a separate zone, I can just... That did not work at all. Now we're in alarm. This is still activated, but it doesn't matter anymore because the fire zone just went off. So if we hit first event here, nah, I guess I can't do that on an alarm. There's our hazard alert. Then we have a knack too short because the resistor and crap. When I get a second knack up, it won't matter. So you can see alarm pull station, hazard, silence, and all the knacks, blah, blah. So that's how that worked. Now, how does the knack work? I'm not gonna explain it. It's the exact same in any other system. Uh, that's 24 volt power, dummy. It's the exact same in every other system. You got two wires, positive, negative, goes into this. This has a resistor on the end of it. The resistor on this is missing. It'll go into an open knack, blah, blah. It's, it's like, that's the only thing that's not, this, uh, not different. Now, I need to figure out how to use ground fault on this, but regardless, the chassis on this is grounded. If you look, we've got our ground wire here, and boom, it's bolted to the chassis. So now we're all normal. So that's how this entire system works. Um, I will soon be mounting one of these. I need to get another, uh, I need to get a bunch more one gang back boxes. I don't like these plastic boxes, they're too flimsy. So, yeah. Give me the metal stuff, the good stuff. Um, I also need to get some grounding screws. I need to get a bag of the screws that go into the boxes and the screws for these because you can see I'm missing one there. I'm missing one there. Yeah, I need to get those. But, that is how the system works. Um, it's really not complicated. Uh, being that this is a dual monitor module, this would also allow me to put up a hazard pull station, which is why this was here. But I was like, I'll put it on its own module because I can. But I could go in the same zone technically here that the weather radio is on, or I can come out of the second port and it will report the exact same. Now, what that would mean is for setup purposes, this would be just general, there's a hazard. It wouldn't tell you what device was activated because both devices will report the same. So this, that's why I put this here, but it's acting really weird. Yeah, and I don't remember. It, it kept going into alarm when it shouldn't have been. All kinds of weird stuff was going on. Let's just do a thing here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do my outro, because I'm sure this might take a while. If you want to stick around, please do. So we're gonna set this to module 21. So, thank you guys for watching this video. Um, feel free to tune out if you want. I'm gonna go through programming and I'm gonna to try to get this to pick up and not go into alarm. So for those of you leaving, thanks for watching. I wish you'd stick around, but can't make you do everything. Hit the subscribe button, leave down a comment, Call out what your favorite part of the system was, what you like the most, what you want to see more of. Um, so with that being said, for those of you who are still here, y'all are legends. I entered the wrong code. So we're in programming. We're gonna go to point program, two for module, one for add. Let's run an auto program and see if it works. I haven't really ever had luck with auto program. Um, you can run one, you don't have to. I don't like doing it. I just prefer to manually enter the point in, but we're gonna go ahead and do that. And um, yeah, so we'll run that. It might come up and tell me that, hey, this module's not working, because it does that. That's why I don't like it. It just doesn't work correctly. So, for those of you who have uh, stuck around while we're waiting for this auto program to run, what was your first alarm? Leave it down in the comments below. 
what was your first alarm, your favorite alarm if you have more than one, and what's your dream alarm to get? Um, I'm just curious to see what you got. This was actually my first, well, technically not this one. Um, this was my first alarm, as you can clearly tell by its horrible state. Um, I don't even know where the other part of it is, but I don't really care. This pull station was modded. Uh, I think I said it in my live stream. I took the, it's, here it is, the dual action one out. I put my single action one in. Let's see. Hey, look, pull station's not found. Yeah, it is. So, no, we don't want to delete it. I should find that one next. It'll actually flash when it does. So I took this one out and put... Uh, or I took this one out and put the, the single action one in. And I had thought I might have to like mod modify this because of this little piece, but I was wrong. The dual action part is actually on this piece itself. That little like thingy there. So you see it flashing. See, it didn't even find it. Didn't even find that, and I'm pretty sure it is connected. Still, I don't think I disconnected it. So that's what I'm saying. I don't like auto program. So point program. Two for module, one for add, zero, two, one. It's a monitor module. See, it goes into alarm immediately. It, it shouldn't. And it's like, it needs a resistor. Oh, well that just broke. The resistor just snapped. Let's reset it and see if it goes back into alarm. Resistor just broke on me. That kind of sucks. That's what I was saying. I was just acting a fool. Um, so, yeah, I just replaced that. And wouldn't you know, you don't have to still push it in. You can just pull it down. And it works just fine. So, I was definitely happy about that, as you could probably guess. But, uh, yeah, so that was my first alarm. Um, you see, now I have an open fault. It's like, what am I supposed to do here? And I don't know if I have any more resistors, because they're in things. So it's like, I also, I guess that's another thing I need to buy is bag of the right resistors. It's totally just... Or they just snap that leg off. So that's whatever, I guess. Really? <laughs> so mode, two for programming mode. Uh, point program, module, delete, zero, two, one. And then we hit escape. And now it'll be gone. But yeah, it's like, why, why did you have to break? Um, need to get a firelight key. But uh, yeah, it's just weird that it does that. And that's the other thing about addressable systems. They take forever to initialize. And even though that's pulling, when this initializes, it still won't work immediately. See, look. I say that. Really? And I accidentally hit alarm silence, so you guys don't see to get the English. Y'all don't get to see the strobe. Y'all don't get to see the strobe going off. Jeez. This isn't the right one. I'm doing the AC or the, the battery hack with the 24 volt power. I'm just wondering if I did 
did the right ones. One of these is set to resettable. Oh, no, they're both unresettable. Okay, no, I'm high. Okay, I see. One and two is unresettable power. I don't want it on. I want this one on non-resettable. No. I want this one. I want three and four on resettable. And one and two on non-resettable, I think. phones right on the concrete no case nothing just wipe it off and it's uh completely freaking fine oh it's a scuff nope rubs right off <laughs> so yeah that's what i wanted To comply with seismic approvals, this cabinet must be... <laughs> That's kind of cool. So, that is how the system is set up, how it works, in a kind of brief technical-ish overview, and how addressable systems actually work. I still need to level that and put the other screw in. So... Why don't we go upstairs? Why don't we put that there? Hey, make sure the key's hanging up, which it is. Why don't we take a trip upstairs to my room, go to my computer, and um, look at the Protostar thing, since we're still here. And get my GoPro, because I've been meaning to get this for some time. This has a footage of me lighting myself up on the back of the panel, because I thought the switch would totally kill power to it, but it stays, uh, the way it's switching, it stays live. And I shook myself. So... And I keep thinking, or I keep forgetting rather, that I have coffee that I've been trying to drink since this morning. Okay, so, Protostar Central Station login. Count number. That's caps locks. Count number, password. So, if we look, we've got there's our AC power trouble. So this is basically when we were starting to mess with it. All of these events here. AC power trouble, restoral, sensor trouble, zone 179. So that would be the that might have been the one I added. 24 hour alarm, that would be the um, weather radio. Pole station, there's our NAC short problem. Restoral, pole station, 24 hour alarm, restoral, restoral. System shutdown, that's actually usually reset, is what that is. Fire alarm, restoral, blah, blah, system shutdown, da, 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 da. So that's how that works. There's our battery trouble when I was messing with the battery up there at the top. But if we go into Discord, we can see here. There's our stuff. 
So there we go, fire alarm, pull station, because that's the custom name I have put in. We go to 24 hour alarm. It'll say weather emergency. So that's all done in Protostar. If we go to account settings, nope, mapping. So you can see the two zones there, they're mapped. But you guys can use Protostar. I will leave their Discord link in the description below. They have all kinds of stuff. You can hook up security systems. I'll probably be hooking up the Vista to it. There's Berg, Berg stuff there. Um, they have stuff for if you have like CO alarms, blah, blah. But they even have stuff with access control, as you can see here. So, yeah, that's basically it. Go here, we can see my ATA stuff. Let's not show those in particular, but you can see, yeah, there's my phone numbers. So this is the do not call number. That's why the caller ID name is that. And then, um, L2 is line 2, so that's my second line. But that's basically how that works. So we're, I'm also working on phone system stuff currently. Um, is that the right cut number? Your call cannot be completed at... Clearly not. Let's do something really quick. I need to go to someone's DM to find it. Um... <laughs> trying to find ah this should be it got him but y'all didn't see that one coming See my friend will answer. Hold on. The person at extension ah. one zero zero six is unavailable. Please leave your message after the tone. When done. Please answer. Dang it. I'm hoping he answers. If he answers, I'm going to immediately transfer him to Rickroll. Ryan. Has been brutally murdered and mutilated by the... Teletubbies. We got some uh, pranking stuff that goes on, but that's how my stuff works. So for those of you who stuck around in the video, thanks. If you're not subscribed, I don't know why you're not because you're still here. So uh, subscribe. I need more coffee. Um, it's warm. Thank you guys for sticking around and watching. You have my utmost support. Check out my Patreon, subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Like I said, leave a comment what your first alarm was and all that. But um, peace, guys.